Welcome to Tuesday Talks. We realize that life is hard. We all have questions that we wouldn't even think about asking out loud. The comforting thing is, you're not alone. We're all asking them. That's what this podcast is for. Each week, we're going to talk about hard questions and painful points in life. We won't shy away from anything. If you've thought it, we're going to talk about it so you feel seen and understood. Join us for our conversation this week on Tuesday Talks. What is up, everyone? Thank you for joining us for another episode of Tuesday Talks. This is, I think, the third attempt because I kept messing up. Um, (laughs) I just didn't set things up right. (laughs) So anyways, we're here. We made it. Uh, Got Grant and Kenny on. How are you guys doing? Doing great. Doing great. Doing good. Excited to be here. What did y'all have for lunch? (laughs) I had a half of a peanut butter sandwich and some Cheez-Its. Solid. All (laughs) the food groups. Was there another episode that you were on where you had like half a PB and J like the night yeah, before? Yeah, I think or the last like time you asked me what I ate, it was a half a peanut butter sandwich. And we're seeing we're, the was Shane the other person? I feel like whoever the other person was, we both were just like, "Kenny, are you okay? Like, do you do you have enough food?" Because <laughs> you're like, "Yeah, I just had a half PB and J sandwich." Yo, some mm-hmm. people's like lunches. I'm starting to get on this like light lunch. Like yeah. I'm used to. I don't need a lot for lunch. Getting a light lunch now. I thought lunch was supposed to be the heavy meal, and dinner was supposed to be light. I don't know. Depends Maybe. on who you ask. Is does bread like when it's expired? <laughs> can you still eat it? Because I realized today that the bread I use expired June third. Yes, the I have been told. <laughs> I've been told that Time you can out. still use it. You just cannot. It depends because some people. I didn't know this, but some people <laughs> refrigerate their bread, and if you yeah. refrigerate Wait, your you've bread, never heard of that. I've never refrigerated bread until I started like. Yeah, getting into the uh, Olin's household and learning what how yeah, Grandma does it. I was gonna say, I think that's it. a northern thing because it one hundred percent is a thing, and it's genius because you can actually have bread life extended, so you can okay. eat it if it's been in the fridge. It has not, but it's almost <laughs> if it has mold on it. No. Okay, then you're good. So I think but, it's fine. Yeah, I yeah, think, but probably not. Also, to push back on the fridge thing, basis. mold grows in the dark, so mm. I don't know how that would work. Go, the cold would slow it down, but the dark would won't speed it up. Uh, I'm so nothing happens to it. Yeah, I think it's a mute point. Northern. People. I had Chick Fil A. Yeah, Chick Fil A. Oh. I had a twelve count nugget meal with a large fry and a large sweet tea. Is that, that was your go to. That's my go to. One thousand percent. Is that what you put as, as your favorite Chick Fil A meal? If if someone asks. Yes. Gotcha. Mm. No, I think I probably put a sandwich. I go back and forth, mm. but mm. what sauce? Chick Fil A all the way. Yes. Is Absolutely. there even another sauce like thousand percent? If you, Polynesian people love this stuff. I get the people like Polynesian sauce, but I think the people that like Polynesian sauce are just people that don't want to like Chick Fil A sauce. I don't. I don't know. How I can like, you try all I the like sauces? Both. Yeah. I will eat both in the same. I know same people. Correct, I know like, people that do the ranch buffalo. Yeah. like mm-hmm. dip. I know people that do Polynesian. They'll like eat their fries with a certain sauce, and then some of them they'll eat with like Chick Fil A sauce. Right. Only their nuggets. So I just yeah. personally, you can't go wrong. I'm I'm not trying to get into the debate because I'm like you can't <laughs> you can't choose debate. incorrectly. Like if with Chick Fil A sauces, yes. You know what sauce is good that not many people know about, but your brother and Nick showed us or showed me at least what the creamy salsa. Oh uh, yeah, creamy salsa. It's yeah, a, it's technically on salads. Yeah, it's a salad. It's dressing. a salad dressing. Oh, but they use the avocado it. one. No, well, not the avocado oh. lime thing. But no. that's similar but, the yeah. concept. They just okay. in that bag they kind of just rip it's it open a, and then we'll put it on. Ooh. Nuggets and fries. Yeah. That's a hot take, but it's a good one. It is. Anyways, Chick fil A sauce is the best sauce, uh, followed closely by Honey Roasted Barbecue, then everything else. Hmm. So, maybe. Sounds like an opinion. I feel like Chick fil A sauce is barbecue sauce, though. So, no. Just a little different. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I, I agree. I, you know, <laughs> Kenny, I have questions. Um, it's kind of more honey mustard. Never mind. All right, moving on. <laughs> So, <laughs> this is what today this we're talking about be. Chick-fil-A sauces. Yes. <laughs> yes. Hopefully you're not hungry as you listen. If you are, this is your sign to go to Chick-fil-A because yeah. Chick-fil-A makes everyone happy. So, yeah. Um, anyways. Unless you have a peanut allergy. Unless you have a peanut allergy, in which case Chick-fil-A really stresses me out. Yeah. And I just, I worry about being Going. around Chick-fil-A. I worry about eating Chick-fil-A. I worry about smelling you're, Chick-fil-A. You've been worrying it? Worrying like, are you this? allergic to this? You no, know, someone I care about is, and I worry about it. Oh. You know, um, shout out to my friend Logan and Zach. They're 
you know, they're mm. allergic to Chick-fil-A or allergic to peanuts. peanuts. But they can eat Chick-fil-A. I don't understand it. Hmm. Anyways, I'm getting distracted. But no, I'm worried <laughs> about everything. I'm worried. I'm stressed out. Um, and I don't know what to do. That's a good How segue. do I handle stress and worry? Mm. Is that what we're talking about today? Yeah, that's what we're talking about. <laughs> Let's today. go. I love it. Um, no, I'm excited to get to address it. I think if you're in a mode where you're in stress or worry, you are just like everyone else. And I don't say that to belittle. I say that to include. And so yeah. for you to feel like you're not um, an outlier, because I think we personify and we put off this like, hey, everybody's good. Hey, how are you doing? I'm great. Like, great day. When in the background, a lot of us are stressed about a lot, worried yeah. about many things. And this is statistically across the board. We are the most stressed out, worryful fearful generation that has ever been on the face of the planet yeah. so we need to definitely understand that like if you're working through this right now and asking this question this is a really broad question that a lot of people are commenting on yeah and using right now because i feel like everybody's feeling this tension in a lot of different areas yeah and there's not like a cure all but like there are practical steps that will actually help take yeah. away stress and worry yeah yeah and i think um just as we work through stress and worry, um, if you're listening to this going, but I think I, I deal, I struggle with more of like anxiety things like, hey, that's not what we're covered today. Um, but just as an encouragement, like if that is something you think you're struggling with, I would encourage you to take that to someone that uh, knows you well or someone that that is their profession. Um, but that's yeah. not what we're going to tackle today. Today is specifically stress and worry um, because that's what this question is. Um, and so on like the surface level, I'm feeling stressed. Let's use a practical example of uh, being stressed out about a test coming up. I've got a big, you know, test in uh, what class? I hated geometry. So I got a geometry test. I know I'm going to fail it. Um, and I'm really stressed out about it. Is, is that wrong of me? I don't think it's necessarily wrong. Like, it's natural to be stressed and worried about these things, and it's a valid thing to be stressed and worried about. However, the Lord tells us, like, what are what can we be worried about? Nothing. It, scripture says, be worried, like, don't worry about anything. Um, therefore, I think a geometry test is included in that. <laughs> yeah, I would say if, as we're trying to distinguish between how we talk about worry or stress or anxiety or some of these like deeper rooted things when it comes to the actual moment is oftentimes really the hardest point to understand whether it's stress, worry, anxiety, or something else. And we oftentimes, if I were to ask you when the next day you're taking the test, your wording and definition and what it is probably is very different because it feels super overwhelming. The most mm -hmm. important thing going on, it's just this, mounting of overwhelmingness and stress and worry and all of this together combined that I think if you're walking from the other side of it and you I would recommend that you kind of remove yourself after you've gone through that initial like hey I've got my test tomorrow like if your test is truly tomorrow this is probably not your best time to like figure out if this is stress worry or something else mm -hmm. because you're in a moment of where you're trying to just cope or you're trying to react rather than be proactive um, and in this conversation I would probably just encourage you that as you're going into the, those moments where you know they're going to be stressful, what's I would ask the question of what's it connected to? So is it connected to you feeling as though you're a failure if you fail the test? Have you been given uh, pressure from a parent or your own kind of pressure and priority that if you don't make a certain grade, then you aren't a certain person. And if you're not, and it's connected, not all of the time, is it going to be connected to an identity problem? But I do think a lot of times when it's performance, it's usually rooted in some sort of like, I need to achieve in order to then do this. And I think you got to figure out what that ending statement is to then address like, okay, I don't have to feel stress going into this test yeah. because ultimately it doesn't define who I am. Mm -hmm. It's not going to change how my parents think of me. It's not going to change all of these things. I think you have to be prepared if that is the case and you're like, they, people are going to see me different. That's something you have to train your mind in or allow the Lord to then kind of redeem and to help you understand that it doesn't have to be a part of your identity no matter what other people think, your parents included, your friends included, yeah. um, us included. Yeah, I feel like a lot of students that I talk to, it's like they're stressed about 
grades or whatever. And I'm like, it's okay if you end up getting a B in this class or on this test. And they're like, well, if I get a B, then I may not get the scholarship. And if I don't do this, then I don't get into this college. And then if I don't get into the college, then I don't do this. But something I've had to like train myself to think too is, I think someone told me this the other day, it was like, even if everything did go wrong, you didn't get into the college, you didn't like, obviously different situation for me, but um, like God is still good and like you still have Jesus and like that should be enough. And I think mm-hmm. that that is so much easier said than done. But if we can train ourselves to fixate on that and fixate on the character of God and the fact that he truly is enough and like challenge ourselves to ask the question, like, do I really believe that he is enough and that he actually is all powerful over my life in these circumstances and that I don't actually have control over these things besides just doing my best. Um, I think that'll just change our perspective on those things. That's really good. I would, I would add to that by saying, if you are walking into moments where you're wrestling and seeing yourself kind of just like, I won't use the word fully spiral, but start kind of compounding these things. Yeah. I would try to figure out a way where you can pull back. Some Most of the time, it's someone else around you has to help you kind of zoom out. But mm-hmm. if you can in some way zoom out, because when we zoom in, we go to extremes of if this happens, then this is the cause and effect. And that is a dangerous game to play. And I think yeah. that yeah. is really the devil's best game. Like if you want to play his best game on his turf, get in your mind, get overwhelmed, get into a stressful situation where it's overwhelming, don't have anybody else around you, isolate yourself with you in your own mind, Mm -hmm. don't sit with the word, don't question anything, just go, this is true because I feel it this way. Mm -hmm. And the results are either I sit at my house and do nothing because I never got the job, or I get the A on the test and that leads to my life being complete. That is where I think you get into a really just dark game yeah. um, of a what if and what are the cause and effects. And so you identifying that is going to be one of your best like starting points yeah. is identifying, am I going to so many steps and this is going to lead to so much if I'm not careful um, and sitting in that moment going, okay, what do I do? That's where I think most people yeah. aren't even identifying that I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm going way further than I have to. Yeah. So how do I kind of steer back, and then what do I do after that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, I mean, can you, did you have some? Uh, yes, but you can. Keep no, going. go ahead. <laughs> I was just gonna say, just also take a step back and realize, okay, if I can't control these things, and all these things could happen, what focus on what you can control, and like, okay, if it's just this test right now, well, then I can study well. I can hmm. set a, a make a plan, put it on my calendar. Like I'm gonna study from this time to this time. That's what you can do, and you can focus on today, and then we'll get to tomorrow when we get to tomorrow. Right. But like, I mean, look, look at my schedule. Like I've got, I've got school all day. I wake up, go to school and then I have my sports team or I have theater or I have band, whatever it may be. And then I'm getting home at like six, seven o'clock and then I've got to do homework. I've got a ton of homework to do. And then like my friends are asking me to come hang out. My friends are asking me to play video games. My friends are asking me to do something or uh, I've got to figure out how to get to church, you know, and all these things. And I don't feel like I have any time to ever slow down. I feel like I'm going 100 miles an hour and I can't get anything done. And that is really stressful. And I'm worried if I say no to something, then I'll lose my friends. Or if I say no to something, I fail in school or I fail at sports or something like that. Like, I feel like I'm worried that I'm going to lose something mm-hmm. and I don't want to lose any of it. Yeah, I would say there's a there's a stress that comes with the performance when we're talking about a grade or winning a game or um, something that is kind of ambitious. And then there's the stress of like approval, um, the stress of I'm not included. Mm-hmm. And I think that's part of what I'm hearing you say is also the reality of like, if I have to say no to someone or to something, it's going to then exclude me from that. And what I would say to you is our current state of living in a cultural standpoint is not sustainable. And what I mean by that is if you are the person that allows like the external commitments to then dictate your entire day, then it'll also dictate your heart and your mind. And so if you don't have things set in place where you're like, I don't have any moment to pause, you're not going to ever pause. If you don't have any moment to rest, then you're never going to rest. And Mm. you've got to say no to something And you're like, Grant, I can't. I can't say no to practice. I have to go or I don't make the team. I'm not necessarily saying that you have to say no to practice or you have to say no to a game or playing on a team or going to school because you have to go to school. You some for your commitments and your word to mean something, you have to do certain things. And I get that. 
but there are there are pockets of time where you're going to be able to actually sit that you're filling mm-hmm. it with a lesser priority video games extracurricular like stuff that you're just kind of sitting on your phone and one of our greatest like tests of this is go look at your screen time and i'm not harping on phones just to harp on phones i've had to do this but if you're out average daily is going hey i'm spending this much time on this app could that be better time you use to then sit in the word mm-hmm. pause for a moment allow yourself to look at your day to debrief I don't think any, I don't, I was never doing this as a student, Mm -hmm. but if you could figure out how to debrief some of the things that you go on, like goes on in your day, I don't think students realize how much is shared with them, both with friends and information they take in on an intellectual level. They just really get asked. Maybe some of them get asked by their parents, Hey, how was your day at school? And that is their only time to debrief. And so that's going to make things just compound because you've not processed any of it. You've not said anything to anybody about it. And so you being able to find those moments where maybe you set a time with your parents or a friend that you really trust or a life group leader or somebody in your life that's a little bit older and you go, hey, these are things that are really, really difficult or these are things that seem overwhelming. How can I process these things well with someone in those moments and look at my calendar before I get to the Mm -hmm. full busyness of the fall, which we're already in right now. And if you're listening right now from this point on, it's probably going to be that you're in the most busy season that you could be in. Yeah. So how do you go from that angle? I would say there's always a reset in January. There's always a reset in like July, but looking at your schedule and going, what's the highest priority? Or if mm-hmm. you're in the middle of the busyness right now, looking at your schedule and going, okay, where are the pockets of time that I could use that are lesser priorities, less com- lesser commitments that I just fill my time. They're just time fillers and use those better. Yeah. The process to help you. That's what I would say. Yeah, I agree. And I think we're kind of like our culture revolves around some of these like bigger things like sports and extracurricular and stuff like that. And so we are afraid to say like say no to those things or don't do them. But I would much rather you say no to those things so you can say yes to some of these better things and like take care of your mental health or like maybe that does mean quitting a sport or maybe mm. it does mean like getting a new job that works with your schedule better or it means Mm -hmm. and not a lot of people have that kind of like I don't know a bit like ability to do that and I understand that but if you do and you can say no to these things do that because it's not necessarily just a no but it's a yes to something better I'm gonna yes to the Lord to spend more time with him and I think we need to refocus and spend like are you spending time with the Lord are you super stressed and I think the biggest thing is like I just don't have time in my schedule but like you said, there's pockets of that you're on your phone or you're watching TV or you're doing something or maybe it means less sleep. Like there was a lot of times like we see a lot of times in scripture where the Lord like slept and took naps. Hmm. But we also see times where he forfeited sleep and he woke up really early to spend time with God. And if Jesus himself needed to do that, then like we do, too. And maybe it's not necessarily in the morning, but maybe it's late at night or maybe it's during your lunch break or something like that to spend time with the Lord and to refocus on these things because. I have to do this because if I don't do that, then I do allow all these like stresses to add up and feel overwhelmed. But when I'm able to like sit and just spend time with the Lord, he's able to remind me of like the big picture and what's actually important in life and what I don't need to worry about and how he has control over these things. That's really good. It makes me also just consider the question of for a student out there that one of the most valuable things you could possibly have in your life is someone that you know loves Jesus with everything in them is maybe a little bit ahead of you. And I know we mentioned a lot about this, but it could be a coach, a teacher, loves Jesus. It could be a life group leader. Um, It could be somebody on our staff, whatever that may be. It may be a parent, Um, but it's more than a peer that you can sit down with and vent and not vent for the sake of just like, I'm going to tell you all the tea and the drama, (laughs) but truly the like unloading on someone this like, okay, how do I do this? Like, how do I process because I think we're so isolated and so individually focused mm-hmm. that if we're not careful, we will literally compound everything onto our own hearts and minds. And we were never meant to process all of that alone. Yeah. And it's not just a, hey, pray and talk to the Lord about it. It mm-hmm. is absolutely bring that to the Lord. And I believe he desires that. But it's also the reality of we have to put something in our like path yeah. that someone's going to consistently ask. Yeah. Not just how are you doing, but how, like, what's been hard about your week? What's been amazing about your week? Like, tell me what's been going on, the conversations you've been having. 
And some of it's realizing in the moment, oh, it has been a really hard week. Like it mm-hmm. takes, I have this in my life. And constantly when I have those conversations with that person, I go, oh, it was a little bit harder than I realized. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, it was way more amazing than I thought. I just had a really hard day. I didn't have a really hard week. Yeah. And it brings perspective. Yes. But it's also not me trying to unload on friends or a peer that's like just somebody I'm trying to like build relationship with in community. It's somebody that's willing to go, hey, I just want to help you see perspective. Yes. And I really think that person is crucial for the remainder of your life to have in different seasons of just people that can have that. Yeah. And, and, and as we wrap up, as we're concluding with time, what are practical ways that I can, you know, like, I don't necessarily feel like I need to quit anything, but I'm hearing you guys say rest, be in the word, all these things. That seems great, but those seem like very lofty, big ideas. Um, and so what is a very practical way that I could uh, leave this conversation and be able to handle my stress and worry of the day-to-day things in a better way, in a healthier way, maybe a better, like a more uh, Christ-like way? Yeah. I would say first, if you feel like a lot of things are adding up, just like sit down and write a to-do list. So it's at least on paper, you know what needs to be done and it's not just all swirling around in your head. (laughs) And then I would prioritize spending time with the Lord. I think that needs to happen before all the two things on the to-do list happens because that's most important and that's going to bring perspective into everything else. Um, And I'm reminded of like the story of Mary and Martha where like Martha went off and like did all the things, like there were all these things that needed to be done. But Mary chose what was better and just sat at the feet of Jesus. And I think sometimes, yes, there are all these really important things that need to be done. You need to do your homework. But also we can get to that tonight. Like we can do that later. Let's spend time with the Lord. And maybe you're going to end up staying up a little bit later to get your homework done. But I think that's what needs to happen. And that will help you have a clear head going into that. Um, And then just something that Elizabeth Elliot says a lot um, that I really like is just to do the next thing. And so... What is the next thing? What's on your to-do list? Hmm. Let's not look at the thing in full, the list in full, but like, let's just look at the next thing and do that. Yeah. Yeah. That's really good. Um, I will add just a verse of scripture that I think is part of my pursuit in this topic. Uh, it's not something that is current. I think it's something that we can consistently pursue. And that is Psalm 86, 11 says, teach me your way, Lord, and I will live by your truth. Give me an undivided mind to fear your name. And I think when I hear undivided mind, I hear there's no way that's impossible. And that's part of the reason why it's a pursuit. And that's why this is written is that, God, if you'll teach me how to have an undivided mind, it doesn't mean that I just sit with only the Bible and read only the Bible for 24 straight hours. Yeah. It's actually that I get to go in a world and I get to have the like godly perspective, Christ apprenticeship ex- like perspective to go, I'm following after Jesus in the midst of my homework. This is not overwhelming because God's taking care of my greatest need and I'm going to trust that he's going to take care of this test. Yeah. And so if you're wrestling with this, I truly, some of the like most encouraging words ever spoken over me is that if I can trust that as a believer in Jesus, that God is taking care of my greatest need, then I can trust he can take care of today. Yeah. He can take care of tomorrow. Yeah. And for you to ask that of the Lord each day and go, God, would you give me an undivided mind not to just do spiritual things only, but to actually see the things that are in our world as spiritual things because we have a right perspective. And that's what the Lord allows for us. Like he says that his yoke is, his burden is easy, his yoke is light. Like he does not want this to be overwhelming. Yeah. Uh, the, this life we were meant to live is supposed to be lived in peace, but that's only found in him. Yeah. Uh, and so you getting the opportunity to take a practical step, I agree. Sitting down and making the to-do list, do the next right thing is absolutely helpful. You getting somebody in your life mm-hmm. that's going to speak only like life-giving, helpful, ask the real questions and the right questions is only going to benefit you. Yeah. But for the busy person, you got to get a calendar. Like you got to <laughs> start sitting down and figuring out what your schedule is. That sounds insane to you right now, but I promise you if you until you see how much where your time is going, you'll never know how to find yeah. the right time to then fit this in. Um, and I would encourage you like for somebody that's for me that's benefited from counseling, having somebody that maybe is a trained professional that can teach you how to mm-hmm. react and how to be proactive and give you tools, that's helped me with stress and with worry and with anxiety and other things that I think can only benefit by talking to somebody that's a professional that can work through this. I would highly recommend those things, all of those things together. Definitely. Absolutely. Well, Grant, Corinne, no, you're not Corinne. You're Kenny. Not Corinne, but thanks. Sorry. KG. Wrong wrong K. (laughs) Wrong K sound. It was the K that got me. Uh, Kenny, 
Kenny, Kenny G. There we go. My Thanks, brain is Alex. Working. Oh, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, anyways, thank you guys for being on. Thank you guys for listening. And if you've been listening and you're like, hey, I have this question or uh, I need this kind of clarified, things like that, you can text Tuesday to 98173 and uh, you'll get a form or we'll get your question. This was actually a question that a student sent in. And yep. so we love getting those questions. We love getting to answer things that you guys actually want to know about. Um, and so feel free to send it in. Your name will not be on it. It won't be connected to you at in any way. So anyways, with that, uh, Grant, Kenny, uh, my brain wanted to say Corinne again, but Kenny. I'm so proud of you. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you did it. Uh, thank you for being on and we'll catch you guys next week. See ya.